Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, that is Sonchalskas. Today is the 8th of May 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's um, Friday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an, invita an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so um, now then, uh, just before we jump in into the charts, as always, quick mentioning uh, of our YouTube channel, Twitch can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD, JFD research page, <coughs> excuse me, which we update also on a daily basis. So yep, uh, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So it'll take you to this page, which I believe you can find useful. Um, so now then a quick update on what's happening here globally. Now this was the figure from this morning so let's see how all this has played out right now um, till till now. Um, so yep the number most likely has has risen. Yep it, it did uh, however not as significantly as uh, we thought so. So um, so we'll continue observing the the situation here, but uh, yeah, it's it's slowly, slowly. I hope we will will get there and uh, everything will be back to normal. So um, now then, jumping into a few charts now, quickly uh, touching on Nasdaq 100. I haven't I have looked at this one uh, yesterday. And uh, basically, uh, what I was talking about was that uh, for you guys to keep a close eye on the um, on this 78.6% uh, retracement on the Fibonacci. Now, uh, yesterday I was al already saying that we will see a nice opening gap here to the upside. We did get that. And the most important is that, that we've managed to close the uh, the day above that psychological 9,000 territory. So uh, looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the uh, the price is already above where it has closed yesterday, so basically it's near this level here, the high of the 24th of February, which I was talking about. So, uh, because that's uh, this is, was one of the targets for us, um, and uh, this level here, the 9,195 territory, we can see that the the price is currently balancing just slightly above it. So the cash index price is currently balancing slightly above it. So it's currently at around 9,200. So basically, once again, we'll see a nice opening gap here to the upside. As you can see, looking at this daily chart, we are having a nice uh, kind of run, a few runaway gaps here uh, to the upside. So. Um, of course, this is a bullish, uh, a bullish indication. Um, for now, of course, don't get me wrong. We are going to be very careful still, still because, um, well, let's not forget that for now, all this uh, move higher here is considered as a as a temporary correction before another leg of selling. I do understand that this is quite a prolonged correction, but again, guys, um, yes, the the index is traveling towards its all-time high, which is roughly around the 9,737 territory. Um, however, let's see if the index manages to push further north. So first of all, of course, let's see if the index manages to remain above this 9,195 territory, which is the high of the 24th of February. If it does, then the next potential target for us is around the 9,406 zone, which is the low of the 21st of February. So something to consider, guys, something to keep in mind. And uh, let's be very careful here um, and let's continue observing this. But again, for now, yes, we will remain a little bit more more on the positive side. However, if this suddenly starts dropping, um, starts dropping back below the uh, psychological 9,000 territory, then, well, I mean, we could maybe 
consider a bit of declines here. However, of course, this this all this area still would be uh, probably a little bit of a neutral one for us. However, we could maybe from the very short term perspective, we could consider deeper extensions to the downside. But if it suddenly starts dropping below the 8,600 territory, then yes, th this is where we will aim for lower levels. Now, f probably let's get rid of this Fibonacci. We have achieved what we wanted here. And now we're going to, like I said, focus mainly on uh, some of these key support and resistance levels, like for example, right now, the 9,195 territory, if if the index continues to trade above it, then the next target for us is around the 9,406 level. So keep your eyes on this one. Um, jumping into S&P 500 now here, uh, also the market is not open yet. Um, and uh, uh, just to kind of uh, show you what's happening here, basically the index, yes, also is looking quite positive, especially looking at the cash index. Um, we can see that the price currently is, the, on the cash index is currently balancing at around uh, 2,900 and uh, 20 territories so which is basically uh, above yesterday's close but still below this uh, the highest point of april which is around 2955 zone so um, also this is the area where we have the 200 day ema as well so also something that could provide a bit of resistance as it did here in april um, so that's why our preferred scenario here uh, after a break of which we could consider um, uh, the upside would be this level here, the, the, the highest point of April, 2,955 territory. That's what we're going to be looking at in order to aim for higher levels. So a break above this level would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep, uh, higher levels could be met. Um, of course, one of the levels that we're keeping an eye on here is the 3,215 3, 3, territory, roughly around here, but uh, just around here we do have this high, the highest point of March, which is around 3,136.37 zone, roughly around there. So, um, However, if the index struggles to overcome this 2,955 territory, then, well, I mean, be very careful as we could see maybe a bit of a decline here. However, we would like to consider lower levels only after a drop, uh, well, of course, this is the more convenient convenient level for us, the 2,729, but uh, we'll start considering lower levels if we get a drop below this 2,798 territory, which is the low of uh, this week. Um, so yeah, guys, for now, keep your eyes on this one. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see how all this is going to play out. Um, of course, uh, the main thing that I probably I should have started with that is that we got the um, job figures from the US. So um, basically, we did get a bunch of, let's say, bad data, which uh, came out better than the forecast. So um, the NFP itself came out at, at around 20 million 500 thousand um, where the expectation was the initial expectation was around uh, minus 22 million so so minus 20 million 500 uh, thousand versus the minus 22 million so um, so yeah better than the uh, better than expected number also the um, unemployment rate also on the, of the US unemployment rate came out also better than the f initial forecast of 16% it came out at 14.7 so of course the market might see it as a good uh, or should I say uh, on one hand yes better data better than the forecast better than, better, better than expectations however well we understand that it's not really good still in general um, the the figures are, uh, yeah, are way on the low side. And to be honest, unemployment rate at 14.7. Um, let me just quickly have a look at the history. Um, this has been, well, I think this is the all time high in a way. And that's the, the high, that's the highest it has ever been historically, as much as data goes here. We, and we have data till 1970. So basically, that's the historic low. Um, so yeah, it may be initially the market is uh, seeing all this as a good positive thing that the numbers came out better than the forecasts. However, let's let's see if the uh, market settles in a little bit and, uh, and, and the and investors start seeing problems and the economy again 
Um, so uh, let's jump into a few other instruments very quickly. Have a look at what, what's happening here. So gold is um, gold is well was pushing higher. As you can see, this is what I talked about this morning. In a way, for us, uh, uh, we were still hanging above this barrier, the 1715 level. Uh, but as you can see now, the just now uh, the commodity started sliding again. Um, so, well, the dollar is, is slightly strengthening. So, yeah, for now, we'll we'll probably remain neutral because again, we cannot really talk about the downside because the downside for us is from around 1680 territory. We need to see a daily close below this in order to aim for lower levels. However, for now, uh, yeah, it's still above this area, above the 1680 zone, and it still has a chance to reverse by the end of the day and push higher. So let's continue observing this one. For now, we'll probably stay a little bit more on the positive side, uh, although we are seeing a, a drift below the 1715 zone. But um, yeah, let's see how the end the day will end. And to be honest, if we if we manage to get a push higher here, let's keep an eye on this level as well, this 1723 uh, zone, which is as you can see also acting as a very good area of resistance. And by the way, the 1723 is the uh, the high of the 12th of December, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's going to be the, uh, the that's the highest point. That's the 12th of December 2012, guys. So. Um, very strong level apparently here, uh, the 1723. So let's keep an eye on that one as well. Uh, but again, for now, guys, yes, it is drifting a little bit lower, but uh, maybe this could be seen as just as a temporary correction. So let's continue monitoring the uh, situation here. Uh, for now, uh, we'll, we'll probably still stick to more to the upside especially if it travels back above the 1715 territory or even better, 1723 zone. Ethereum, um, not much is happening here to be honest i mean for now we're playing the waiting game and uh we're waiting for um this one to kind of uh make a move now probably let me just clear up this chart a little bit and just start fresh now first of all uh we can see that the uh the crypto continues to climb higher here trading above this upside support line taken from the low of the 13th of march um the um the Crypto right now it managed to reach a high here in April, which is roughly around the 227.5 zone. Um, and in a way, as long as it kind of stays here above this upside line, but below this highest point of April, we'll remain neutral because uh, we need to see a clear breakthrough uh, the highest point of April in order to aim for higher levels. Because uh, this way, the uh, from the technical side, the the, the crypto the Ethereum would confirm a forthcoming higher high, and the next potential target could be around here. Here, marked by the high of the 7th of March around the 252.50 zone and by the way that's the highest point of March as well so keep your eyes on this one um, and uh, in terms of the downside, well, uh, if we break, if we see a break of this upside line and we see a drop below the uh, the lowest point of this week, which is around the 195.15 territory, roughly around here, then yes, uh, we could consider maybe slightly lower areas, uh, maybe going all the way here somewhere towards the uh, the low of the 20th of April, around the 166 level, or even further south. However, like I said, we need to see a confirmation break through one of these levels first, either through the 227.50 or the 195.15 zone. Uh, DXY very quickly here, uh, to be honest, it continues to range, so not much has changed. Um, so we'll con the only the only positive thing here is that um, after having a, like a, a nice reversal here from this lower side of the range, I mean, although we did get an, a, vi a strong violation here, but uh, we'll for now we'll keep it this this area on the chart. Um, the the index started pushing higher and is now continues continues to balance above uh, now continues to balance above the 21 day EMA here. Um, so in a way, kind of could be seen as a positive and uh, which could in a way lead uh, help uh, more buyers to kind of push this one towards the upper side of the uh, of this range. So which is roughly around the 100. 0.93 level uh, marked by the high of the 6th of April. Um, so we'll keep an eye on this one again. Like I said, as long as it remains above the 21 day EMA, we'll remain positive, but uh, only target the 100 100.93 zone. Um, 
so keep your eyes on this one guys again it's uh it for now it's it's stuck here it's moving kind of sideways overall so the only thing is what we can try is to maybe uh, capture some sort of a short move here but again uh for now uh keep your eyes on the 21 day ema uh us dollar against the turkish lira and uh looking at this picture here um so it's still trading nowhere it's still stuck here and uh, basically, we're, 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 we will continue monitoring this. And this is what I talked about this morning, uh, what I was saying, that in a way, as long as it stays above this upside support line, then yes, there is a good chance for this one to continue uh, continue kind of moving higher overall, of course. But if this upside line gets broken and we see the rate falling below the psychological 7 territory, then yep, uh, we could maybe start examining lower levels. But again, for now, guys, uh, as long as it remains above the upside line then yes the overall trend is still to the upside uh, USDJPY so uh, something that I talked about this morning as well and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this downside line so um, also what I was saying that in a way there is a chance for this one to drift uh, higher again um, especially if the figures come out better than the forecasts of, of the US jobs numbers so this is what I talked about this morning and uh, yeah we got the the figures better than the forecasts uh, you can see a push higher but this is where I, I've mentioned earlier that um, let's see if investors actually continue seeing the positivity. So for now, yes, everything's looking quite nice. Um, however, if this downside line from the technical side, of course, if this downside line continues to hold, then, well, I mean, we could see another round of selling. So be, be very careful. If we get a break of this downside line, uh, for us to start considering higher levels, we would prefer to wait for a push above the 107.50. For now, that's the situation for now. Maybe we'll change, we'll, depending on how this is going to perform, maybe we'll change, maybe we'll lower this barrier. But again, at this point in time, the 107.50, that's the level we need a, a break of uh, in order to aim for higher levels. Uh, USD CAD. So uh, here we having we're having a bit of an opposite uh, move. Uh, so uh, USD CAD um, also delivered. Oh, oh, sorry, USD CAD. Can Canada also delivered its job jobs numbers, which came out also slightly better uh, than uh, expected. However, apart from the participation rate. So. Um, here, uh, you can, uh, the participation rate uh, was expected to come out at 65.1%. Uh, however, it came out at 59.8%. Uh, unemployment, Canadian unemployment was expected to come out at 18% percent but uh, managed to squeeze into 13 percent so uh, the, and some other numbers other good numbers as well so employment change has was came out much better so yeah uh, Canadian dollar is strengthening here a little bit against the US dollar uh, but as you as you can see as I've mentioned before I mean for now we're basically being careful because the pair remains within the range um, <clears throat> And what I've mentioned this morning, still there is a chance for this one to drift further south to test uh, this uh, lower side of the range, which is roughly around the 1.3856 zone. So we'll continue monitoring that. Uh, so this is going to be our main target for now, because uh, again, we want to see how all this is going to end up being. But um, again, for now, guys, we are going to be aiming for this uh, 1.3856 level. That's from the technical side. Uh, USDCH Chef. So this one uh, also I've mentioned this morning. So basically, some of these instruments are a quick update of what what I was talking about this morning. So this this has not changed much. The USDCHF has not changed much. Has not changed much uh, from the the morning kind of uh, activity, and uh, it remains above this uh, zero point ninety seven thirteen territory here. I talked about this one, and also continues to trade above the uh, above the one hundred EMA and the fifty EMA. So uh, on the daily chart, of course. So yep, uh, for now everything is kind of uh, sorry, not the fifty twenty one day EMA. So the one hundred EMA and the twenty one day EMA. So uh, everything's kind of looking quite 
positive still because what I was saying that in a way as long as the rate remains above this territory then maybe there could be a chance for this one to reverse and push higher and maybe get a normal test a good test of the 0 0.9797 territory but if it does that this time uh, well to be honest it could increase the ch its chances of a possible move further north so basically if it reverses now from from this area um, so probably something uh, that to watch out next week because probably we will end up the day somewhere around here um, could be unless something drastic happens but uh, yeah uh, it in a way if it stays above this for the for today then all eyes are on next week because we could see a, a nice curve here to the upside and uh, a test of a, a good test of the 0 0.9797 territory but if that gets broken now this is where it could become very very interesting for the buyers again so keep your eyes on this one um, and uh, if we get a cl daily close below the 21 day EMA well I mean probably uh, the lower side of the range could be back on the table so let's keep an eye on this one um, Euro, Euro JPY uh, the looking at this daily chart you can see the uh, the pair is really trying to fight it and tr in pushing back up and most important is pushing back above this Mm, the lowest point of April which is around the 115.41 zone here so good news for the buyers um, let's see if the pair manages to stay above this territory because if it does then well it increases its chances of um, having a nice move higher maybe next week so if I look at the weekly chart probably we could uh, yeah we can see that yes the candle is still bearish However, from the very uh, from a bit of a short term perspective, uh, there could be a possibility for this one to drift a little bit higher, maybe towards the 116.50-51 zone here, uh, especially if it stays today above the 115.41 zone. So keep your eyes on this one. Uh, let's see if we can increase that probability and try to maybe capture uh, an up move here towards the. Uh, towards the 21 day EMA or even a little bit higher. So again, like I said, guys, very interesting developments here. So let's see how all this is gonna play out. And finally, Euro USD. So this one was pushing a little bit higher this morning. However, as you can see now, it is drifting uh, back down on the, the dollar is strengthening a little bit. However, the rate still remains above this barrier, the 1.0824 zone. I talked about this one and uh, for now, basically, it's not giving up still. You can see that um, although we had a bit of a decline here uh, this week, so it, it went from the upper bound here of this range towards the lower bound. Um, and uh, today, like I said, uh, today we were seeing a nice push higher. However, uh, for now, guys, uh, it's it's a very difficult spot probably we might end up the day somewhere even here uh, probably could save itself save the all the trading activity for next week uh, but again uh, for now guys keep your eyes on this level here the 1.0824 because if we get a nice uh, if we, if the rate stays above it maybe we could see a bit of a an up move in the beginning of next week uh, but if it drops below this then well I mean uh, all eyes are on this 1.0777 level again because uh, this is the area and th we need to see a daily close below the territory in order to aim for lower levels because as you can see we keep getting overshoots but we don't get a daily close so we need to see a nice daily candle closing below this territory and then yep further declines could be possible for now uh, we are monitoring this the low of the 5th of May, uh, which is around the 1.0824 zone right here, uh, because the rate continues to balance above it. So let's see if the bulls manage to keep it there. So, um, so guys, now, um, I hope you found it useful. Uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. Just a quick update. Um, on Monday, we um, I should start the video running live again. I should start my videos live. So hopefully there won't be any technical issues. But, um, yep, try to catch my video on Monday uh, live uh, at around 6 o'clock GMT time. Um, so, yep, we'll pick up on some of these instruments, some new ones, and, uh, yep, we'll take it from there. But hopefully everything can get back to normal from next week. So, uh, and, I, and I can resume my live videos, which might be a little bit more useful. So, 
Okay, guys, I, like I said, once again, I really hope you found it useful. And uh, thank you very much for your likes and your support, uh, especially this week and in general and every week. I do appreciate that, guys, and thank you very much. Um, if you want to join me on Monday, please do. I will be happy to see you there. And But for now, uh, I hope you have a wonderful ev evening, wonderful weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.